Welcome to Hornbill TV Explainer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Al Nguli. How many times have you looked down at your plate and wondered, wow, I actually contribute to pollution and environmental degradation? Have you ever wondered that one of the most beloved food stables in Asia, not to mention only in the Naga people, is probably one of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gases and environmental degradation? that it actually messes up your land and water, ladies and gentlemen. Even the Supreme Court wants it out of agriculture production from Punjab. Of course, you can't ban this food item forever, let alone stop consuming it. This explainer is only for educational purposes, so don't tell your parents and grandparents yet. And if your parents are in the villages, I don't think that you should be sending them this video. We're talking about rice right paddy cultivation do you know that the great wall of china is held together by sticky rice ladies and gentlemen i think the real reason why we do not want to clean the rice cooker at home is because of the hard rice residue that stick to the inner surface of your cooker when the great wall of china was being built during the ming dynasty in the 15th and 16th centuries construction workers used porridge made from rice they mixed it with calcium carbonate as mortar cement we called it here to hold the walls stones and bricks together the great wall is still standing today i suggest you pass this important information to your family whatsapp group on Tuesday, one of the strangest remarks about this food item, rice, patty, came from none other than the Supreme Court of India. The Supreme Court said that the central government should seriously consider the suggestion of the Punjab government to phase out patty cultivation in the state. Phase out here meaning stop cultivating rice in Punjab. It suggested that patty cultivation should be stopped. It then suggested giving incentives to farmers to adopt other traditional crops such as millets. The government can help this process by giving farmers minimum support price or MSP for their new crops. So what was the main reason that the Supreme Court said paddy cultivation in Punjab should be phased out, that they should stop cultivating it? Number one reason, pollution. There are two aspects to it, uh, actually. You must be aware of the severe air pollution in Delhi. Stubble burning is the act of setting crops residue on fire so that the field can be cleared for the next crop to be sown. It's like how northeastern farmers clear and burn jungles in jam cultivation. The only difference here is that the smoke from the fire that you make collect over urban areas in Haryana, Punjab and Delhi there are actually in the midst of fighting a very big battle against air pollution ladies and gentlemen Th this practice it causes severe air pollution because farmers have to sow the uh, next crop on time in order to maximize its yield the most convenient and inexpensive way is to burn the crops residue the leftovers now the second reason for the supreme court's remarks is this the damage to the environment and the depletion of groundwater table that petty or rice cultivation causes. Now the Supreme Court called for substitution of petty with alternative uh, crops in Punjab to prevent stubble burning as it contributes to air pollution in the Delhi and national capital region and the areas around New Delhi or Delhi. So with a spike in stubble burning cases, the air quality in some of Punjab's district has deteriorated poor and very poor category. The quality of air in Delhi and the NCR region often swings from poor to severe category. Most of the time, ladies and gentlemen, you must have heard about this in the news too. The Supreme Court was hearing cases related to air pollution in Delhi and the NCR. The court said Paddy was not native to the state of Punjab. It is not part of Punjab's food culture and that a switch to alternative crops may only occur if minimum support price is not given for paddy but for the alternative crops. That's what they were told. Interestingly, the suggestion to phase out paddy cultivation in Punjab came from none other than the Advocate General of Punjab, Mr. Gurminder Singh. He suggested to the court that 
paddy cultivation must be phased out to be substituted with other crops. Also, senior advocate uh, Gobal uh, Sankara Narayanan also noted that paddy should not have been grown in Punjab as it has reduced ground water levels in the state, ladies and gentlemen. For all we know, rice is the eternal food for the Naga people, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you can demolish a pizza, a burger, at least two plates of momos and two plates of chow? But you can't sleep properly and you get cranky and angry if you won't have a if you don't have a plate of rice at home. Uh, if you don't eat three plates of chow and momo and you still uh, and you still don't feel satisfied until you take two plates of rice at home, you are a true Naga. Let's be friends. Approximately 86% of the cultivable area in Nagaland is under jam and terrace rice cultivation systems. Ladies and gentlemen, traditional rice varieties are grown in altitudes ranging from 300 to 2500 meters. Nagaland reported rice production at about 363.300 tons in 2020. This records an increase from the previous number of about 356.700 tons in 2019. So now, what are the details to the reason the Supreme Court and the Punjab government want to phase out rice production in Punjab? Which ranks fought in rice production in the country? These are the main reasons. The adverse effects of rice cultivation on the environment. First, emission of greenhouse gases, ladies and gentlemen. Rice is grown in flooded areas, areas that have an abundance of water. Rice fields need to be submerged in waters. Now, this clogged water generated greenhouse gases such as uh, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrogen oxide, nitrogen dioxide, uh, nitrous oxide etc etc they are released release of these greenhouse gases increase global warming second climate change after the harvest the straws and the husks are left out farmers often burn the straws and husks which emit carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases and cause global warming it contributes to the temperatures of it all if you have ever burned dry waste and observed the thick smoke spreading, imagine how much literally thousands of hectares of paddy fields uh, on fire can do to the environment. It is true that in terms of greenhouse gas emissions from stable food, rice has one of the lowest and the smallest footprints per ton of protein. It is much more efficient than any animal best food. However, microbes in flooded rice paddies produce methane, some of which is emitted into the atmosphere. You get what I mean. Paddy cultivation also causes soil depletion and soil pollution as it requires a lot of water to grow, ladies and gentlemen. Because rice demands an abundance of water, the clogged water produces also, yes, it produces mosquitoes, other insects and bacteria too. This is due to the fact that stagnant water is the ideal place giving birth to mosquito larvae. This causes the spread of diseases such as malaria and then there is dengue and other similar diseases. Another reason why paddy cultivation isn't really environment friendly is the use or misuse of water resources. Ladies and gentlemen, rice cultivation is said to demand an average of about 100 to 200 centimeters of rainfall. It is a high water consuming crop because of poor irrigation systems or even climatic conditions such as delayed or hard or extreme monsoon, a large amount of underground water goes into rice cultivation. De uh, deep tube wells are used for drawing up underground water. These deep tube wells need high electricity consumption. A great amount of water resources is then wasted in this way. Further, because the moisture is used up, there is insufficient soil moist moisture left, which means poor soil quality. If you have ever built a house on a former petty field, you will observe that it takes longer for the soil to absorb the rainwater. Poor quality soil. For now, though, rice is here to say, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Hornbill TV. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Alan Lee. See you next time.